Anyway, uh, I, was, I was a little bit squeezed in time for, for preparing for this, so it may not be a problem. Um, fortunately, there's a good old school teacher trick for unpreparedness, and that is, I have a movie. Uh, it, it is kind of a cartoon, but it's not Woody Woodpecker. Uh, it is fortunately on the maritime cloud. And uh, I hope that it will at least scratch the surface of the answer to the question, what is the maritime cloud? So let's start with that. Safety of navigation at sea has undergone constant and steady improvement and evolution over more than 2,000 years. Only 200 years ago, the concept of the modern airplane was born. Based on lessons learned in the maritime domain, aviation safety has evolved exponentially, resulting in a big gap in technology adaptation between these domains. It is now time to close this gap and bring the maritime domain effectively into the digital age as we know it from everyday life. Sailing a ship today is like a jigsaw puzzle of various information pieces that has to be put together. For example, today if a ship wants to navigate under a bridge or a narrow strait, the navigator has to engage in a variety of tasks. He has to simultaneously communicate over the radio with other vessels about their intentions and possibly receive potentially irrelevant information through legacy communication systems. The navigator needs to be aware of relevant safety information such as navigational warnings and constantly double check both air and under keel clearance. The navigator has to multitask and handle large quantities of different types of information in order to navigate safely. <laughs> the Maritime Cloud offers an infrastructure that enables a high degree of automation of these routine but crucial pieces of the puzzle, allowing the navigator to focus on the most important tasks. The Maritime Cloud is a global information exchange framework that helps vessels of all sizes and flags to connect anywhere on the globe to a seamless and paperless information exchange system. Digital information exchange and authorizations allow ship operations to become safer, increasing the overall efficiency of maritime transport. The Maritime Cloud has three primary components an identity registry that provides all maritime stakeholders with a basic maritime identity and basic methods for authentication, integrity and confidentiality. A service registry for keeping track of available e-navigation services in a given area and a messaging service for transporting information between stakeholders in a seamless and secure way. The maritime cloud itself is just an intelligent communication framework, just like the operating system of a computer. The service registry effectively turns the maritime cloud into a global marketplace for all types of e-navigation services. An example of a service is the vessel route exchange, which enables vessels to broadcast their intended route in order to increase the situational awareness of other vessels in the area. For the navigator, the maritime cloud enables safer navigation by allowing the navigator to focus on critical tasks while trivial tasks like port reporting can be automated. Context sensitive data can be directly integrated into the electronic chart display and information on unexpected navigational hazards can swiftly be crowdsourced from seafarers in the area. The Maritime Cloud ensures vendor independent services and interoperability through internationally agreed standards and protocols. Moreover, it offers a unique opportunity of creating the Maritime Internet of Things crowdsourcing maritime data from vessels around the globe. The maritime cloud is a unique but natural progression for the maritime industry into the digital age. <coughs> All right, uh, I had kind of planned to show it backwards, but I think given the time constraints, uh, we better move on. Um, <clears throat> so how did, how did we come up with this idea of the, of the maritime cloud? Really, it has two sources. One source is uh, from the old efficiency project, which took place 2008, 2012 ish, where we did the first experiments with developing prototype e navigation services, trying to make point to point, point communication over the internet, uh, trying to exchange information through uh, AIS, doing practical trials in, in developing e navigation services, and experiencing all kinds of shortcomings in doing that. 
uh, faulty uh, communication, uh, lost communication links, trying to reconnect to, to systems, uh, the problem of discovering uh, sources of, of information, all kinds of, of practical uh, problems that was uh, uncovered in, in, in these uh, practical trials. And the other way is the top-down approach from the, from the IMO process that, that Peter, Peter Pep was uh, describing. The need from, for an infrastructure for e-navigation has always been acknowledged. It's very, very prominently described in the strategy plan for, for e-navigation from uh, 2008. And I'm sure I don't have the paper clear in my mind right now, but if we look at the, uh, at the old paper that uh, uh, Brian Wadsworth was uh, creating, in that case Paul Dumont mentioned there, we will find that there also explained the need for logical infrastructure to support e-navigation. So, so the need uh, arose uh, from, from those different sources, from the top level and from the practical level, really. Then uh, we started creating the prototype, first in the, in the first Mona Lisa project, and then picking up pace in, uh, in maturing this concept, developing prototypes uh, in, the, in the Axios project. So, many of the services that we've been mentioning uh, today, uh, more concrete, exchange of intended route, route suggestion, MSI, uh, uh, Maritime Safety Information and Notice the Mariner Service, uh, Vessel Operation Coordination Tool and the Maritime Messaging Service, which we'll all come back to. These uh, have been used and, uh, and will have been used uh, to use the Maritime Cloud for communication uh, exchange. So the services use the cloud and in that the cloud is also being tested when we experiment with these uh, different types of, of services. We have the different services shown in the demonstration room that uh, will be available to, to see later on. So, we are now, of course, at a state where we have a running prototype that has been used in the Axis project, but it's also used in other projects. Uh, it is used in the Mona Lisa project, uh, where other uh, parties like uh, Transas and Masik have been developing services using this uh, maritime cloud infrastructure. And also uh, in, uh, in Korea, uh, maritime a university and a research organization as part of the global e-navigation testbed initiative have started developing services using uh, the maritime cloud. So this is the status right, uh, right now. The next step is to further expand this uh, as part of the global e-navigation testbed initiative, build more services uh, to, to, uh, to use the, uh, to use the, uh, the maritime cloud. Uh, a Japanese research institute is also starting development of services using this infrastructure. It will be the infrastructure of choice for the new Mona Lisa project, which is not called Mona Lisa, I think it's called the STM Concept Validation Project. It will be a, a part of the infrastructure for, for that uh, project. And we've got a new project coming up, Efficiency 2, that is actually starting the 1st of, of May uh, very soon. And that has a very large focus on the maritime cloud to mature, develop the maritime cloud, and it even has the, the, the goal to establish a regional operational maritime cloud for the Arctic and the Baltic. And of course, support both prototype and operational services for these regions. So we are taking to the next step and actually making regional uh, operational instances of, of this infrastructure and other parties are starting to show an interest in this, uh, in this infrastructure. Uh, I know that uh, uh, Kongsberg is looking into it as part of, of uh, the, uh, the large e-navigation testbed in the Malacca Straits, and others is, is starting to look at this, uh, this infrastructure as a, as a possibility. So, where are we going with this? Of course, it's always been the vision and the idea that the maritime cloud should become the IMO adopted infrastructure for e-navigation. That's always been the goal. Uh, and, and this has been proposed, this has been introduced to IMO uh, in, in various papers. We are shifting a little bit focus here and not focusing as much uh, on IMO as, as, as we used to. IMO is moving along with the e-navigation uh, e process in its IMO-ish pace, uh, but, but we're really seeing 
IMO uh, or the maritime cloud becoming not the adopted uh, infrastructure uh, now, but the de facto infrastructure for e-navigation, because it's happening. Everybody is starting to use this infrastructure. So I think soon, when I get bold enough, I'll start to talk about the maritime cloud as the de facto infrastructure for e-navigation rather than the proposed infrastructure for e-navigation, but I'm not quite there yet. I think uh, in this process, there are two very, very important organizations, and that is IALA, which obviously is looking at how they can support the e-navigation development from the shore side, and the newly formed ESSCTG, let me see if I can get this right, the e-navigation ship site coordination task group, I think, horrible acronym. But that is a newly formed uh, 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 group that will look at how to organize the e-navigation process from the ship side. Obviously, Ayala will have a leading role on the shore side, but we, we are lacking a ship side counterpart for Ayala. And this group is, is being formed to be that ship side counterpart to, to Ayala to make e-navigation happen. So the, 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 uh, the, the strategy now is to get those bodies to adapt this as being the infrastructure for, for e-navigation. And then, of course, in the end, IMO is the, is the target. All right, so I'll be very quick here. Popular, I think. <laughs> and um, so we'll have a workshop uh, later today on the, the Maritime Cloud. And uh, unless all you beautiful people turn out to be software engineers, which will surprise me, we will keep these discussions on a, on a high level uh, and try to discuss things like uh, governance of the maritime cloud, how can we envision that being handled, uh, who would be able to do that, uh, what are the issues of, of liability in having such an, an infrastructure, trust, security, benefits and pitfalls, downsides, and, and uh, maybe a possible roadmap for where this can uh, take us along, and whatever other issues we, we may come up with and have a discussion on that in the, in the workshop. All right. <laughs> Thank you very much.